<laughs> Good morning, y'all. I y'all only want to see me standing in the purple rain. That's all you can see, right? <laughs> Good morning, family. How y'all doing? Um, welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Y'all, I engaged in one of the best weekends in terms of conversation that I've had in a long time. Um and it was with a predominantly mixed group in my area, fortunately, that um, uh, are open uh, enough to want to hear different ideas and uh, from other people. And they seem to be aware of their personal biases. And, um, and at least when you can kind of find somebody like that, they might not always be in agreement with what they're personal biases and beliefs or values are, are, they don't recognize them at first. But after this, a lot of times these conversations, um, they begin to happen. Now, with these kind of conversations, what I don't really indulge in is when people really are not willing to leave their party affiliation if they're not willing to really uh, live their religious beliefs, their um, employment titles, um, just whatever it is that separates us in life, that the master uh, divisioner have, have, have taken advantage of, with all humanity to get us to focus on, you know, what we're different on as opposed to what we're alike about. But that's neither here nor there. In these type of conversations, you have to keep your self grounded because the techniques that you got to use sometimes are, are challenging even to yourself. And it's always an exercise in practice. Okay. It's like you, you know, you hit and miss, but usually you get pretty good at it after a while. But like I said, it's always um, those times where you second guess or you, um, you know, maybe challenge a little more. But this weekend, I, I, I thought I engaged in a real effective group. So anyway, we began to talk about cultural uh, biases and what are the goals for people who um, consider themselves, uh, let's see, impactful and um, progressive how they see the world and what can they do? What what are what can be their goals for inclusion and what can be their goals for being able to live in a more healthier environment, right? For the next generation. Well, what I found out, what I found out is most black folk are very, 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 very uh, married to their religious affiliations. Oh my God. The hardest thing in the world, even beyond their race or whatever, it is hard for black people to live, leave their religious affiliations at the door. And you would think that a group of people that has been beat down so much by religion will be the first thing they would leave at the door because they will be like, damn, this ain't working for me. Somehow, uh, the majority of my people uh, are very, very religious, but we have nothing to show for it. Either our deity um, is dull because we're not deriving any power from it or we're looking outside some of the places we should be looking or something. I just know that it seemed to me, I think when we did the count, it was more ADOS, descendants of slaves, married to their religious preference as opposed to any damn thing else. And that to me was really, it's really, it's sad. I mean, because 
Because, you know, a lot of times people don't understand when we start talking about the, the difference between ethnicity and race. Race is a group of people who share common genetic heritage. Okay? And we start talking, though, about the ethnicity. It's the sharing of a common culture by a group. Okay? And so this is what the um, conversation got into. And it was very, very interesting where this conversation went. Because then we got culture. And co culture is a uh, um, is, is y'all group's belief, ideas, and patterns. Um, that that's relating to each other and the physical creations or the artifacts that the group members use as they live. Um, the dynamic patterns of learned behaviors, values, and beliefs exhibited by a large group of people who share historical or geographical lineage, society, you know? That's what culture means. So, Then we got to talk about assimilation now, because we talked, nobody were, that was of Caucasian hue ever even thought about we how much uh, black folks assimilate. Okay, and that's part of the problem because they always say, well, why don't you do this and why can't you do this and why? Part of that is because they feel that we should assimilate to the dominant society and the dominant group and they can't understand why we won't. So the assimilation means the behavior that conforms to the general cultural patterns of the dominant group. So you can be black and you can be like, what was the guy's name? Uh, Bigsby. <laughs> Dave Chappelle. Uh, Bill was uh, my name is so and so Bigsby. You know? And he he assimilated. Well, fortunately he was blind, I guess. So but it, it, it's the it's the people that have just can't deal with whatever culture that they group belief has so they try to assimilate into somebody else's culture it's pretty much to me um multiculturalism is the concept of looking at the world through the eyes of more than one culture okay now here's what we ran into a little problem and it became a real stickler for the evening and i didn't know how much it would but it did we talked about uh, prejudice and everybody knows prejudice really means to prejudge. Hold it, you guys. Um, my animals are acting. The okay. Then we came, um, uh, talked about prejudice, which means arrive. Okay, prejudice derives from the root word. I mean, from pre, we got pre before judgment. So prejudice is to prejudge. And I contend, and I'm and this is where I have a problem at. Collectively, and this is what I see. Because it's very important to understand having habits and patterns and all that stuff. So collectively, I don't feel that black people are prejudiced. Because I believe that we are the mother and father of all civilizations. And, and pretty much, we haven't judged you before the fact. The fact is, what has happened to us right here in the North Americas and, and abroad is not prejudging. When I go back to King Leopold and all the slaughter and everything that has happened with even the Vikings and all the wars and uh, rumors of wars. I'm not prejudging when I am apprehensive of somebody that has been my open enemy. You are going to have a hard time of convincing me of that. And what I found out, in my opinion, there was a lot of problems in that 
with in with people accepting that m- myself as a ADOS person felt that way. Although it was acceptable for a the the uh, a person of a Jewish descent to feel apprehensive just in that short period of time about their history uh, with Germany. And I found that amazing because I was saying that after 400 years, you guys are having a problem with us or me saying that I'm not prejudging. This is what has happened. I've made an assessment because this has been a pattern and a practice for a certain amount of time, which is what you do when you assess any and everything else. However, it's not respected when I do it, but it's respected when when they do it and they choose a certain amount of time and then say, well, because of our history, we're apprehensive. And when she said that, Everybody got quiet because really she just spoke her natural bias in that moment and everybody heard it, even the people that agreed with her. So they couldn't say anything. So now maybe there's somebody out there that feel a little different, you know, and that's why I said I will bring this to my illustrious, brilliant subscribers who I Love dearly. I thank each and every one of y'all out there because y'all inspire me. Y'all challenge me. Y'all give me encouragement. Um, at you know because uh, uh um I could be doing so many other things, but I guess when you retired, <laughs> you really um I spent a considerable amount of time doing things that I love, but this right here, I feel like is a ministry. And talking about things and getting people to open up about things that are really difficult without going to war with one another. So there was another individual in there, a young man, who said all this stuff will stop if you just vote for Trump. And so, of course, a lot of people in there got mad um, or, you know, was saying, hey, what they got to do with anything or yada, yada, yada. And my and my my statement to him was, you know, why don't you go somewhere else with that? Okay. So he said I was prejudging him because he said I didn't know him. If I saw him walking down the street, because you know they 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 can't be wrong, right? He 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 just couldn't take that L. He had to keep going. And if I didn't know him on the street, you know. I wouldn't have said that. In that sense, you're absolutely correct. It wasn't until you opened up your mouth, though. It allowed me to see where you stand. And my reference point was, anytime you open up your mouth and tell people to vote Republican, and the person that represents the Republican Party, who is the Republican Party at this point, because most people that are that repub that are Republican are repulsed with Trump. Okay? And right now he represents the party. So if you say, you know, vote Republican, you're saying love Trump. So if you love politics, is what I'm saying. So um I consider myself a jack of all trades. Let's play this one for a minute. I found it insulting. Um that he would think that because when he first said vote Trump, why wouldn't he think that we would make a, a stink out of what he said? Because when we listen to Trump's rhetoric, rhetoric it's against indigenous people. It's against black and brown bodies. Right? That's what it's against. He's saying things to let you know um, where he stands. You know, how are you going to talk about law and order? You got a police shooting somebody five times in the back or everything that he's purposely done now is to 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 bring division 
between us. Yet and still, you kick Farrakhan off the internet. This is just like how stupid this sounds. Farrakhan has never asked for the open enemy, uh, the killing of any open white people. Pretty much, he's never taken. Um, a sa- I mean, if you could show it to me, as a person that's been at one point of my life, um, a, a, a member, whether you know I was a kid or not, but I wasn't taught that. I wasn't taught that as a kid. Okay, so I don't know. Maybe people before me were, but I wasn't taught that as a kid. So. Donald Trump is sounding the stereotype, discrimination, uh, scapegoating type of behavior. And he's rallying up that base. And I don't I'm not prejudging when I say, oh, Lord, here they come. Or when I say, I don't even want to talk to you. I don't want to waste my energy in trying to change your mind about how you feel about black people. That's a waste of my time to try to eradicate racism. That's a matter of the heart. God has to do that. But in the meantime, I see you and I'll make sure I stay away from you because you are not a person that want to be civil. Even if we disagree, you're a person that right off the bat is telling me, I don't like you. You're brown. You're this. And I can't coexist with you. And I'm brown. That, that makes no sense to me. And so that made sense to him again until I brought up the point. Well, I guess you would feel good if there was a person in here that walked in here and said how great of a man Hitler was. I would think to any Jewish person that would be a strict insult. And they probably would want you out of there and not return, basically. So when you have those kind of conversations and you get to have them with uh, somebody that or people that, you know, reflect the society, but not what you um, envision or what you not your socialization, then you, you learn to be patient. But to a certain degree, because the way a person is socialized, you know, it's really deep. Only the chains of wanting to break that bondage can make that person see it a different way. Otherwise, it's what we call as old folk setting your ways. You know, a lot of ways I'm set in. All of them are not good. But the acknowledgement is I'm setting my ways and I try to change. But some shit, they don't insist you wasting your time. And that's one of them. So I thought I'd share that with y'all. You know, the definition of cultural terms, whether we're talking about what's the difference between cultural, ethnicity. And I wonder what y'all think about this. Because a lot of people say there is no difference. And I'm like, what? What? A, a perceived or a simplified generalization about a particular group, that that stuff is real. But it's all learned behavior. Tell me what y'all think. Okay, because Earth, Wind, and Fire said, a child is born with a heart of gold. Way of the world makes his heart so cold. I believe that, y'all. I believe that. Okay, I'm done. That's my rant for the day. Like what you hear, please share the video. Like the video, y'all, and leave your comments. I love your comments when you leave them. And I'll see you next.